The tools shown in this video are for ethical hackers only. Do not buy this tool with the intent to use it for malicious purposes. How can hackers hack an air-gapped network? After all, if the target is not connected to the internet, then how could an attacker possibly connect to a host and inject malicious code and maintain any kind of a connection? Believe it or not, this is a widely asked question that has been answered a long time ago. In 2008, Iran's Natanz nuclear facility was believed to have been the site of Iran's nuclear enrichment program, potentially developing nuclear weapon. And yes, that network was air-gapped. Despite that, it was hit with a brutal malware strain called Stuxnet. This malware effectively disabled the facility for a number of years. And I've already talked about all of that in another video on this channel. So how exactly did that happen and how exactly was Stuxnet able to get on that network? Well, we need only look at one of the largest cybersecurity brands in the industry to get an answer. And the answer is this. This is it. This is how you hack an air gap network. This is Hack 5's Bash Bunny. And this small USB is not as innocent as it looks. This bad man pajama is capable of all kinds of terrible things. Which if you're wanting to play around with this in your home lab, again ethically, or if you're wanting to become an ethical hacker and you want this as a tool in your toolbox, then there's an affiliate link down in the video description where you can get one. But again, only do it if you're going to use it for ethical purposes. And it is something that you can put on your resume that would be pretty cool. So how exactly does this work? This executes a payload as soon as you plug it into a target computer. It doesn't matter if that machine is logged in or connected to the internet. If this thing gets plugged in, then it'll run. Wait, 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 wait. That sounds way too simple. Why is it that way? USBs were not originally created with security in mind, as with all things in technology. So computers are automatically trusting of new USB connection. Now yes, you can go into your computer settings and either disable a USB driver or tell your computer to not trust USB connections, which is a great way to defend against these kinds of attacks. That being said, if you work in an organization where you do rely on USB connections, either to connect with different you know, IT accessories like a printer, or if you're really trying to limit your wireless footprint by sticking with wired connections, then disabling USB connections is not so simple. After all, business must go on. You still need to get work done and you can't really do that if you're not allowing your devices and your IT network to function as it was designed for. You're basically letting attackers disrupt your network without even having them attack you. Another method that this could be stopped is with antivirus products that are able to detect new USB connections and either request user permission to allow that connection or just deny automatically. Those are yet still imperfect, but do offer a good layer of defense and are better than nothing, frankly. But what makes this little thing so bad? Well, like I've said before, whenever it plugs into a computer, it automatically detonates a script. And this script can be something that you can change whenever it is in arming mode, which is right here. And whenever you're in deploy mode like this, it is literally that easy. You literally flip this switch and it's ready to roll. Those scripts can vary from anything from copying a specific file system to unlocking a computer to installing a malicious backdoor that will connect automatically to a different network that you have control of if again if that network is not air gapped but in the situation where a network is air gapped then this could just deploy malware and let it spread throughout the network if it's some kind of a worm similar to what happened with the Stuxnet attack and yes it can execute even on a locked computer it's that simple and easy and that is honestly freaky if you are a defender so how can you defend against these now we've already talked about disabling a driver and disabling trust between you know your computer and new USB connections that is an option however again you may not necessarily have that luxury if you are relying on existing USB connections what you can do is you can just turn off all your computers you cannot hack what is not alive okay well that isn't a bad idea again it's a little bit more extreme than distrusting all USB connections again it's a business you have to make sure that things move on and honestly one of your strongest methods that you can defend against these is through user training and awareness on the threat of malicious USBs and strangers having access to IT system. Really, you should not have a stranger logging into any of the devices on your network and plugging anything in. So if you see that, that's something that you should call out immediately. And again, having software on each endpoint that is able to detect a new USB connection and either automatically deny until it is approved by the user, or at least even alert the user that there is a new USB connection, that can really be a huge plus because even if you can't 
can't stop the attack it, you know, from before it happens. If you're able to detect it after the fact and go back and you know identify what exactly happened, you know, that's still a layer of protection ultimately. While this Bash Bunny is a great tool for ethical hackers, you can still make this happen with other USBs much smaller and much less suspicious like than this. In one of my favorite shows on television, Mr. Robot, he's tasked with hacking into a prison where it is air gapped. And basically to do that, he drops a bunch of malicious USBs uh, outside of a police station. And that allows him to gain access to that network and basically deploy a worm that ultimately unlocks cell doors and it, it was messy. But it would be even more of a threat if a hacker had one of these and they were on premises and they were able to plug it into any one of the IT systems. Again, a great example on why you should never let strangers near your system, let alone plug anything into it. Simply put, let this video be proof that even if your network is air gapped, it's still not 100% safe from hackers. Life in cybersecurity is pain. Now again, if you're interested in getting one of these and playing around with it as a personal project for your home lab or for your resume, or maybe even for your professional career, again, as an ethical hacker, you can get it in an affiliate link down below. And again, yes, I know I sound like a broken record, but only use this if you're going to use it for ethical purposes. This is a video that YouTube believes that you would like. And because I personally believe that nine times out of 10, YouTube is correct, you would enjoy watching that video, then you should probably watch it. And if you don't like this video, let me know down in the comments. I'll see you all later. Bye.